everyone. I'm Mandy Lynn Donovan. I'm your host of Port City Personalities over here, Rogers TV. Super excited about today's episode. And I think you guys are going to be excited too. We are going to be joined by three of my favorite men. That is six, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to be joined by Ethan Ash, going to be talking about what he's doing right now. Joined by Tyler, who needs no last name. So I'm not even going to give it. You'll just have to see. And you're going to have to book him because he's super amazing, super awesome, and super talented. And also, we're going to be talking to Darren Elmore, the, the Duchess of Sussex. We'll be talking about his upcoming comedy show. Can't wait. Thanks for joining Port City Personalities. Let's get the show started. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining me. I'm your host, Mandy Lynn of Port City Personalities here in St. Awesome. I'm super excited today. I'm super excited for a few reasons. I'm excited for these mugs here. Uh, if you need a sticker, you let me know. I'm also really excited about today's three guests, uh, three of my very favorite people. We have Tyler on the phone. We have Ethan on the phone. We have Darren on the phone. We're going to have a great conversation. This is going to be arguably the best hour of your month. So let's get started with some hard hitting questions. We're going to start off with Ethan. Ethan, are you in Canada and are you okay? I am in Canada. The sun is shining, which is strange because it hasn't been lately. And I am, I'm good. Yes, I'm good. How are you? I'm great. It's been so long since we connected last. I think last time we connected, you were on my radio show. I did radio at the time and I tried to kidnap you. And no, that was a different time. The kidnapping was I mean, when I stole you off stage, right? I took you off stage. Or was that your rider you, list? I, I never remember. You have tried to kidnap me a few times. I've, I've seen the inside of your trunk more times than I wish to admit to. But it, it was fine. It was fine. You know, it's, we're all friends here. <laughs> that was great. And I believe that on, I believe on the radio episode, we had the mayor of St. John on and you were serenading him and I. You were offered to buy us breakfast. But the thing is, is we showed up for breakfast and you weren't there. But that's fine. We're over it. It's, it's you know it's because I was I was being generous I was going around saying John buying everyone else breakfast you know I'm that kind of guy <laughs> that's fair so we're so happy Ethan to have you back what's it like what how long have you been back um I've been back just I think it's about two weeks just under two weeks um got about another week left um yeah it's taken me a minute I'll be honest it's taken me a minute to get my head around being back, um, you know, I haven't, haven't been here for like 27 months, haven't done any shows for 27 months. Um, so yeah, it's taken a minute, but I'm, today I realised I'm good. I'm good today. Like, yeah, it's, it's kind of all those kind of self-critic, critical voices have disappeared and I'm, I'm happy and I'm, I'm looking forward to summer, you know. We're really, really excited to have you back. And we're going to talk about the transition to getting back into shows, I think, with everybody on. So let's move along to Tyler. Tyler, who are you? How are you? And how is things? Hi, Mandy. Thanks for having me. Uh, my name's Tyler. I'm a filmmaker, I'm a photographer, and I'm a television producer. So I work in a lot of different avenues of video production, photography, um, and that, that's sort of been my life for the last 10 years professionally. And yeah, that's what I do for a living. And for the record, you and I saw each other a few weeks ago in Sussex. I didn't try to kidnap you, right? Just for the listeners? Or did no, I? I don't. Well, it was close. It was close. I, I wasn't worried. So That's <laughs> there was enough people around. You should be. Well lit. <laughs> yeah, we were in a public place that was well lit. I think it was. I had no fear. Yeah. That doesn't That's stop her. Yeah. <laughs> he was on the stage in Harbor Station. That's right. Now that I think about it, Ethan, you were on Harbor Station. Now I'm remembering who was. Uh, and I think I, yeah, I did steal you off stage. So I, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Uh, your, your lawyers can get with my lawyers. Next up, we have the amazing Darren. Speaking of Sussex, we have the Sussex, the Duchess, the Dutch of Sussex. How are you? Who are you? And what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not quite sure yet. Uh, it's still early for me. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm Darren Elmore. I am a comedian, stand-up comedian. Uh, based in Sussex of all places, uh, possibly the worst place to be a comedian, but uh, it's uh, it, it's fun. I'm here uh, because I've got big stuff coming up and uh, a big show that I'm going to be filming my first ever stand up special along with Tyler. He's going to be uh, directing it and uh, he's the creative director. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And I've 
always been wanting to be on your show because you have so much fun. So uh, you have not tried to uh, to abduct me, unfortunately. Uh, I'm a little bit too big for that. But uh, yeah, if you ever want to, just hook me up. I, I, I'm ready to go. Super excited to have you. I wish that you had some posters or some sort of collateral we could know about some of your upcoming shows, but that's fine. <laughs> oh, I could I, I, I totally have that. I could give it to you. I wish there was something behind you that we could see though. Like, I, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are super, super excited. Uh, so happy to have you here, Darren. Thank you so much. Um, great oh, comedian, one of my favorites, one of my absolute favorites. Um, and Ethan, one of my absolute favorites for uh, singers. And Tyler, you're just everywhere and do everything all the time. So much energy, super, super, super excited. So I want to get started off with, um, we're going to start with Tyler and we're going to ask about shows. So we've all, we're all coming back from the pandemic right now. We're all getting out to shows again. Um, and uh, Tyler can attest to this. A few folks that him and I spoke to recently talked about how great it felt to be out again. Some folks that we talked to um, saying that they've been home for two years and coming out of their shell, that it could be a little bit overwhelming, a little bit exciting, also a little bit scary too. And so as a performer, as a recorder, as um, arts, visual, everything, talk me through that. So let's start with you, Tyler. What's it been like for you? Well, first, I'd like to say you're right. That last show in Sussex was incredible. And I think that that show was the first show recently where I kind of felt like things are coming back. It really felt like things before uh, 2020, if you know what I mean. It, it felt like we really are coming back to live events and concerts and comedy shows. And that's something that I always really loved. Uh, little known fact, about 30% of my business has actually been filming things that happen on a stage and then turning it into video content. So over the last two years, I, I was a little bit lost in that sense. I, it did feel like I lost a huge chunk of my life, of my business, of, of even my income. And it, it's been a really great feeling to do, uh, you know, the show in Sussex with James and, and Darren, and then the road trip that Ethan and James and I took to PEI to do a show. Uh, it's just, it's felt really magical. It's it, more magical than I could have even thought. Uh, and I, I, you know, I think everybody still is a little apprehensive. We want to make sure that we are still following the rules and being respectful. Uh, but just ultimately, I'm, I'm happy that we're, we're getting back to this and I'm, I'm just ready to come back better than ever. And, uh, you know, as, as Darren said, I'm going to be producing his comedy special at the BMO Theatre at the end of the month. And I'm so excited. That is just, it's going to be amazing. We're going to pull out all the stops. We're really going to, yeah, we're, we're, it's, it's going to, it's, yeah, I'm just, I'm just super, super excited. What has the overall vibe been though? The overall vibe, like recently? Yeah, with, with yeah, everything just, starting up. It's just been exciting. It's just been like a sigh of relief. I think that's the biggest thing. So, uh, you know, whether it be through Ethan or Darren or James or my friend Jason Cyrus uh, in Moncton, who does hypnosis shows, we've all just it's been a sigh of relief it's just like this is it i think i think this is it we're we're, we're getting back to normal and 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 we're gonna we're gonna make it make it the best ever yeah jason i didn't know he's a good friend of yours i think um uh -huh. i hosted a show for him before and i didn't think i could get hypnotized he's brilliant so i was i was a pig and i was i forget what i was doing but i probably pig type activities but he is fantastic isn't he He's incredible. And he's got some shows coming up this summer. Another one at the Capitol Theater that I'm really, really excited for. Uh, yeah, it's it's just a, a beautiful time to to get back into it and enjoy some entertainment, too. That's that's the other beautiful thing is it's not just about me and the performer. It's about the people who get to buy the tickets and go get entertainment. It's a really great thing. Yeah. So folks are ready now. So not only are folks welcome, it, they're, they, they can't wait now for things to get back to the normal, the new normal, whatever it may be. But at the end of the day, separating all of that from it, folks can't wait to get back to having a life where they're able to go outside, where they're able to integrate uh, uh, with, you know, other folks to be able to take in a show, to be able to take in a move specific to any kind of arts and culture. Wouldn't you agree? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, even just with travel opening up, like my girlfriend Shelby and I, we just booked flights to go see a concert in Toronto next month. And it, like before we bought the flights, we we're just like, are we doing this? Are we doing this is really happening? We're, we're actually going to be able to do this. And it's, it's just, you know, it, it all all ste are uh, full steam ahead. You know, like it's it's going to happen. So it's it's just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that. And Darren, talk me through what it's been like doing shows again and uh, 
being in front of folks. How do you feel as an entertainer? The layoff was difficult. It was really difficult because that's how I make my money, you know, and uh, uh, plus there's just something uh, really uh, energizing about performing regularly. Hey, you get better and better and better with each time you go out. Uh, when you don't have that, you sit long periods of time. And for most comedians, it's really, uh, really hard on the head because you start becoming too critical uh, and then you lose your timing. And there's so much of that stuff is just so much about feeling. So when you do get those opportunities to jump back on stage, you're just like, a deer caught in the headlights sometimes. Uh, so yeah, it's been really rough being off, but uh, I'm so, I managed to pick up a couple of shows. I did a show at the drive-in with James Bollinger uh, while during the, uh, the lockdown, which was fantastic. It was really bizarre, but it was fantastic. Uh, but it just wasn't the same as performing regularly. And now I'm back at the point where I can plan ahead. I can look forward. I can make plans for my future. And it's, uh, it's, it's exhilarating. It's absolutely exhilarating. Thank you so much for that. Ethan, yeah. talk, me through, talk me through what it's like um, uh, being back and performing in shows. Was there a sense of apprehension or is there a sense of, okay, you know what? Um, we're ready for this. If I'm really honest, I was really in my head about it. Um, I did a, I kind of landed on the 8th, no, 7th, and then James said, come to PEI with me on the 9th. Um, so that was the first thing I'd done effectively. And it was, yeah, like even even my friends over here and some other people I did a show the night at Long Bay, kind of we, it was about 50 people just, you know, we sold it out, but it was like the first little solo show that I'd done and people kind of recognized I was in my head there. Um, and it, yeah, it's taken a minute. It's taken a minute. I think there's, you know, there's, there's Darren says you have all you have all those kind of internal critic, imposter syndrome, all this. Can I still do this? Do people still want to see me do this? Do I still want to do this? Um, am I able to do this? All, all those kind of questions. And then, you know, you, you do it again, and then you kind of like, oh yeah, this is. I, I realize why I love doing this. It's a, uh, it's one of those things you you don't want to do it. You need to do it. It's just you just have to. So it's, I love yeah, that. it's yeah very well said and so touching on that and this question I'm going to go around to ask each of you this is um, a lot of folks that we talk to they've obviously uh, um, been locked up or locked away or um, um, I want to know did you find any new talents or was there anything you learned about yourself or what did you do during that time so um, for example um, on our first episode uh, Derek talked about how he learned how to be a plumber and how he learned how to um, do construction. And um, we taught, we heard from folks that started reading, that started writing, that started um, um, even in business world, changing their whole career path. We have folks that, um, and I know that each of you could attest to this, but we have folks that have changed and shifted their whole career. So talk me through that. What uh, we'll start with you, Ethan. Um, I, I ended up, one of the things I did, I ended up doing a master's degree. Um, Perfect. So you did a master's degree. That's great. So, uh, oh, and how did that go? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I did a, I did a master's degree um, in, in stuff that's not related to music in the slightest. Um, and it was quite difficult, um, but I, I, I passed it better than I thought I would. Um, and I also, because my master's and my other degrees are in um, psychology and neuropsychology, um, I ended up going and working for what is known as the NHS in the UK. It's like a Horizon over here, I assume. Um, and I was working uh, in mental health um, with in something called crisis. Um, which I won't really go into because it's not necessarily the nicest thing. Um, but it was kind of, I needed to do something and I, I, I wanted to do something as well to kind of help, I suppose. Um, so most of my time has been spent in hospitals um, working with people who are not having the best of times. That's fantastic. Thank you for that. Thank you. That is amazing. Tyler? Uh, as far as 
so, sort of what I, I learned or experienced or pivoted into over the last two years. Um, I guess that, that was really the question, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I sort of pivoted a lot into the world of, of TV production, but I also went into the world of live streaming quite a bit. I, I had to adapt and, and that was sort of the nearest neighbor to uh, what I was doing beforehand. And I, I did do a lot of live streaming, which I you know wasn't a huge fan of because the, the product at the end of the day isn't quite as polished as a as an edited video. Um, but so, so that's work wise, but, but personally wise, I just, I took a little bit more time to relax, you know? Um, and, and I did have fewer things on the go for work. Uh, so I was able to sort of reflect and take more time to relax and spend time with my girlfriend and my cats. And when we were allowed to spend time with family and, and that sort of stuff and that I really, really value being able to just sort of slow down for a couple of years, you know, even, even though I know, you know, it was very stressful for myself and for a lot of people, it did allow me to just sort of relax and, and breathe and, and rethink a few little things in life. Yeah. Nothing too specific, but just uh, like a, like a long vacation and you don't know exactly when it's going to end. That's fantastic. I love it. That's amazing. Thank you. Darren. Well, I was kind of in a unique uh, position aside from the comedy um, I've, uh, always had some mental health issues. I've got a panic disorder and I'm on the autism spectrum. Uh, so when people told me that I had to stay away from other people, I was like, that's my jam. I can do that. <laughs> so, uh, it really wasn't that hard for me to stay locked away and uh, avoid other people. Uh, but what I, I, learned absolutely nothing. I, I didn't come, I didn't try sourdough. I didn't, didn't try to fix things. I certainly didn't get a master's degree. Uh, but uh, what I did do is I spent a lot of time with my dog. I, uh, Sussex is really blessed here. We've got the great natural, uh, uh, the nature trails uh, right within town limits. And there's so much great hiking around at the bluffs and uh, just all around. We're so close to Fundy. Uh, so it was, uh, I spent a lot of time walking my dog in nature and it really helped relax me, which I think I really needed uh, to go forward into this next phase. I agree. Thank you so much for that, Darren. That is, that's fantastic. So I think we all can agree that we've all taken some time for ourselves, that we all have taken time to reflect. Um, so what I want to know is what is in your plan or agenda for the next year? Let's start with you, Ethan. What do you plan on doing the next year? So we know you're in Canada now. We know that you're going to uh -huh. go back home. Are you going to be touring, <laughs> writing more music? I I hope so. I hope so. It's a uh, I'm I'm planning. I'm planning and starting to think about organizing those shows coming back here in summer. Um, it's something that I I would do uh, in BC. Um, you know, and I haven't been able to kind of tour properly since 2019. Um, so that's what I want to do. I want to come back here. I want to do shows. I want to tour around the marathons and and not have to necessarily use my brain in the way I've been using it for the last two years I can go and do the thing that I implicitly love and am okay at and just enjoy being on the road and being in a gas station at two in the morning with some banana bread and a red bull and hopefully some money <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair that's fair all right Tyler um Things, things I'm looking forward to in the next year, things I've got planned for the next year. The, the biggest thing would be season three of my TV show, Atlantic Edition, which is uh, starring James Mollinger. Everybody knows, uh, I think everybody here knows him. Uh, in fact, I think that's how, how we all met ultimately. But uh, yeah, so his He's TV the show- He's Bacon. Be, yeah. <laughs> six, six degrees of James Mollinger. Um, so we've got, got the, that rash once. It sounds like a rash that you'd get. Yeah. 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 That'd be a good a name good for one. one. A good one. Um, it is. <laughs> so we've got the third season of that coming up, and I'm really, really excited that it's it's even gotten this far, uh, and, and I'm just hoping for the best. And we've got a really great lineup of guests this year that we're going to be meeting and inter interviewing. Lots of travel. Um, it's that, and really, that's going to take up probably half of my my next year. But other little projects I've got on the go. I've got uh, a small little project that I'm cooking up with an old high school friend of mine, Alex Mayberry, who's a chef. We're working on a cool little project and I don't want to say too much about it. Uh, and I've got some other little contract jobs that I do for various companies that have some pretty exciting projects coming up this summer that uh, yeah, I'm really just looking forward to and, and, uh, and a little vacation. And that's, uh, yeah, that's about my next year. 
That's awesome. Darren, what about you? Oh, well, hopefully performing, performing, performing. Uh, right now, uh, the biggest thing, of course, is happening on April 30th at the BMO Studio Theater uh, with Tyler and also with James Mullinger. He keeps popping up. Uh, he is like whack-a-mole, but with the, <laughs> with the saucy grit. Um, actually, we actually, every time we mention his name on air, we get $5. <laughs> 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 well, James Mullinger then. Uh, anyway, <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a fantastic show. I'm really, really excited about it because the BMO Studio Theater is fantastic. And, uh, and of course, uh, Tyler is amazing at what he does. And I think he's going to put together a great, uh, a great video. And a lot of the year will be spent uh, benefiting from that because it's also going to give me the ability to promote myself a lot better. Uh, especially outside of New Brunswick. So I'll be able to, you know, expand my, my uh, sphere of uh, professionalism and I'll be able to uh, step my business game up. And uh, for sure, let's hope. That's amazing. So thank you all of you for that. I want to move back to mental health for a minute because it's something that we've all been talking about. Anybody that listened to last episode heard uh, Dr. Ansar and I talk about some tips, some tips and tricks of, um, talking about mental health and what to do throughout it. I want to know, um, this is a little bit deeper, but I want to know um, what you experience mentally going through this and if there's any tips or tricks that you have to offer folks as well. And since you're right here, Darren, we'll start with you. Uh, well, yeah, I've, uh, mental health has been a lifelong struggle for me. And, you know, back in the days when I was growing up, it just wasn't, uh, the resources weren't there. Uh, they're still not there. We need to get better at that. Uh, I think everyone deserves the right to immediate personal uh, health care, mental health care. And if uh, anyone's listening out there that can make that happen, please do. But uh, I think the, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the best thing for me was having a stable home, uh, having people around me who listen, who understand uh, and opening up, you know, you've got to, it's so hard because a lot of people are really f frightened of what's going to, what the people around them are going to think if they actually open up. Uh, and I promise you that's, it's not worth worrying about. Uh, take that risk, reach out to somebody if you need it. And uh, the, the support will be there in your, in your life. So, um, and that's what really helped me is, you know, being able to, uh, for me, it was my family, especially my mother. Uh, she really uh, kind of took care of me when I needed it the most. So uh, I'm forever grateful for that. And then, of course, get yourself a dog. Get yourself a dog. I love my dog. Uh, and I love walking my dog. And it's, uh, yeah, it's a fantastic thing to have that unconditional love in your life. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much for that. Tyler? Um, I think... Our, uh, the me mental health is definitely one of the most important things we need to think about going forward. Uh, I think a lot of people don't realize how uh, or, or what things negatively affect their mental health. And sometimes there can be things in your life that you're doing or habits that you form that can negatively affect your mental health and you can get into a rut because of it. And I know for me, two of the big things that really helped me were number one was getting exercise, getting outdoors, really, really just helped me just have a bit more pep in my step. Uh, and then and then the other thing would be uh, disconnecting from the internet and social media. I found that, that really, really, if, as Mandy, as you probably know, like you'll send me a message on Facebook Messenger and it'll take me a couple of days to get back to you. Uh, and and it really, it's just because I, I, I've turned off all notifications. I like to just just take myself out of it sometimes and, and not I thought uh, it's because it's at 3 a.m I thought it's because it's at 3 a.m that, that you and your girlfriend were feeling comfortable with that no I'm, I'm actually more likely to reply at 3 a.m because I do stay up really late often like 3 or 4 a.m which he, actually even that is a mental health thing um I find that okay. like staying up too late not getting enough sleep that's something that really negatively affects me um, and I think it just, we need to normalize people talking about it more, talking about mental health and talking about their own experiences, because everybody experiences it differently. Some people's is, is more severe than others. Some people have different triggers than others. Certain habits can, can set it off for certain people. So I think just talking about it, learning more about it and, and 
telling people, offering help to people too, I think is, is a really important thing. Offering help. I like that. And so one of the things that, um, that I, I made a point to do is say, how are you anywhere I go? How are you? And um, at any cashier, at any place you go in public, how is your day today? You think that that's something so small, but the ripple effect of how people are like taken aback by sometimes like, oh, you want to know how my day is? And then I'm like, I sure do. How are you feeling? How is things? And it can go a long way or uh, reaching out to folks uh, via the phone. So instead of just messenger, uh, picking up the phone, calling people and then, you know, after, uh, you know, speaking to them, seeing how they're doing, that's good connecting. FaceTime, Zoom, Teams, everything like that. Um, uh, nobody has a pager anymore, so I haven't been lucking out with that. I paged, I paged Ethan like nine times. I 911 them, them, uh, and he still didn't get back to me. But uh, so I guess we'll jump to Ethan. You can talk about mental health and why you didn't answer my pages. Because <laughs> because everyone else was talking to you, I just didn't want to just didn't want to be more noise you know it's fine but do you still you know? have it on your belt buckle are you still hanging your pager on your belt buckle or no I, I tuck my shirt over it so everyone knows I have one and I put my phone <laughs> on the other side and then I, I have one of those I have not one of these not the airpods but like the bluetooth headset oh the, just, the one that used to go to your mouth where, you, where you're yeah, chewing gum did, aggressively yeah yeah I just I and I, I walk around a car park and I find just someone's f you know 150 and I lean on the back of the tailgate and it's, uh -huh. Yeah. And, and I'm not talking to anyone, but I, I like to look important. Someone somewhere will now be going, that's me, <laughs> while we're talking about mental health. Right? <laughs> Plus, it keeps fans from, uh, from walking up and introducing themselves to you, right? I just talk to myself. I don't have to have a Bluetooth headset. I'm like, no, I'm not talking to you. It's fine. It's just me and myself. <laughs> yeah, you, but you, um, know what's, you, know what's, you know what's funny, though, or something uh, uh, before you get into that is, I had a friend once and we were in a sketchy area in New York. And she said to me, um, if you ever uh, are by yourself and stuff, then, you know, remember if you're crazier than the other person, then it's fine. So I, a couple of people were walking and then I was like, uh Oh, I better be crazy. <laughs> like, cause I'm already crazy as all of you guys can attest on the phone. I'm silly nuts crazy. And, uh, and I love talking about mental health because I think that I think it's great that we all have our own kind of crazy and that it's great to talk about it. And we all have our own story. We all have our own ism or thing. And so I started being crazy. But then my feelings got hurt because they looked at me and they ran away. And then I got sad. So like, go ahead, Ethan, you answer. I just needed to get that out. No, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Um, mental health. Um, I suppose I, I, I might come from it from a slightly different avenue, um, but it's, I think for me, it's uh, there's so much stuff and so many things, and you know, you got your quality of your stresses, the quantity of your stresses that affect people's daily lives, people's upbringings, people's past, and I think a lot of the time, mental health is guilty of uh, pathologizing uh, people's difficulties and people's struggles. You know, you you give someone a diagnosis and it doesn't actually explain much to that person a lot of the time. You know, if, if you experience a traumatic experience, then you call it PTSD. It's not necessarily going to help them. It just, you know, and, and then some, if something happens to someone walking through a park, of course, they're going to be wary of parks. Um, I think if, it, if a diagnosis helps explain it to someone from a personal, from an individual level, it's, it's beneficial. Um, but I, I think I, whenever I speak to people in a, professional context um i find even when people are experiencing their own difficulties they they think it should just go like that um and it doesn't i always put it in the in the shape of physical health effectively you know you you fall down the stairs and you break your leg and you're sitting in a and e you expect to be in pain um something adverse happens to you it's going to take a while and you know everything you are and everything you know is from this funny little blonde like thing encased in darkness in your head that never really sees the light of day unless you have a really bad accident um, and we expect it just to just to fix itself and you know our brain's got funny ways of getting us to cope or getting us to forget and it's I think it's telling someone you know actually take a minute you know if you've got to take a minute it's fine if you don't get out of bed today you don't get out of bed if you don't want to get out of bed and then you do get out of bed and all it is is 
go and get a muffin or something. Cool, go with it. You know, it's, yeah, mental health is so complex. Um, and I, I've had this stupid saying, if you can do something, do something. Um, and if it, you know, sometimes you see people and you're like, oh, maybe that guy's not all right. And we just kind of, oh, I'll be fine. Check. You know, it's nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. Rarely does. You know, um, you know, and I've, I've experienced a lot of different things in the last two and a bit years of people's difficulties. And I mean, it, literally anything um, from people having panic attacks to being really acutely unwell and needing to go to hospital. Um, but everyone can take a certain amount of stress. And just because you can take more stress than another person doesn't mean it negates the other person's difficulty. Absolutely. And I think that, and I think that it's important that we talk more about mental health, that we said that it's okay. Like they say, it's okay uh, to say that you're not okay, but talking about it, uh, whatever your strength is on the mental health spectrum is um, knowing like how to cope, how to help people with it, how to be effective with it but I like the idea of the of what you're doing getting out of bed I have a friend that she writes down everything that she's going to do um, during the daytime and she goes through it diligently and at the end of the day whatever she didn't cross off off on it that's fine get to it tomorrow mm -hmm. but um, it's setting different because there's such a standard set already on life and I think that before pandemic um, we can attest like the differences of that so before pandemic you do this 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 but then once everything shut down we were restarting or we were starting and then stopping and starting and then stopping then finding ways to get through and do what we're going to do so talk a little bit about that Tyler about what you think um, is effective um, with mental health I think you know it, it depends for every person, everybody's a little bit different. I know, like I said, for me, it was um, exercise, disconnecting from social media, because I find and everybody gets sucked into this trap of just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Like if you're bored and, you know, doing anything else would be more productive than that. Like sitting down and watching a movie would be a heck of a lot more productive than just scrolling through Instagram, right? Because then you're actually engaged in a story with actors and, and characters and all that stuff. Um, but um yeah, I think I think at least for me, the, the exercise, disconnecting um, and just reconnecting with friends, you know, that to me really, really helped a lot. Um, I, like I say, everybody's different. So I think it's it's important to to maybe take the advice of other people that you respect and admire and, and try some of their advice, see if it works for you. Um, and then, uh, yeah, hopefully we can all be happy and stronger together, you know. Absolutely. And for you, for you, Tyler, uh, you're a creator. So what, what, why is this your calling? What does this mean to you? I like to tell stories. That's my biggest thing. And I, I really like to tell stories visually. That's something that I always loved growing up, like watching TV and watching movies and realizing like you can tell a story with a series of images. It doesn't need text. It doesn't need audio. You can just tell a story with a series of images. You can invoke a reaction from somebody. You can get an emotion out of somebody from a series of images. And then, of course, you layer in the sound and you layer in other other aspects of story and, and creativity. And, and you can really get to people that way um, you know I, I i never i was never a book reader um i was never a speech giver um you know to me it, it was it was the visual aspect of things movies tv shows that's the sort of stuff that i love and, and when i was a teenager getting to play with an eight millimeter handy cam and make stupid videos with my friends that's when i realized like this is the thing that i want to do with my life this is my i found my medium that was that was a really big turning point for me yeah, I, I, like, I like to tell stories and and with, uh, you know, for the comedy specials, for example, because I do produce a lot of comedy specials to me, I want to put the viewer in a seat in the theater and I don't just want to put you in a seat. I want you to really feel like you were there or in essence, because a lot of these shows are often sold out. I want the person watching this to go, damn, I should have been there. I should have had a ticket to this. And that's my big goal with those comedy specials. And, and just going back to Darren, that that's what I'm going to be doing with his, is really making the people watching this go, I really wish I was there. Absolutely. Thank you for that. So talking about getting inside of your head and talking about writing, and I'm going to get to you in a second, Ethan, but Darren, um, building on what Tyler just said, with writing and being in your own head, how do you produce your comedy? Where's your comedy writing driven from? And what's your process like? Talk me through that. 
Well, uh, most of the comedy that I do actually is generated from uh, trying to explain myself to other people who might not be aware uh, because I am a little different. I, you know, when you're on the spectrum, it's, uh, it's kind of hard to explain to people why you're so aloof or why it's so hard to maintain or make friends, you know, it's so, and uh, on top of that, I'm LGBTQ plus, uh, so I feel like there's uh, one of the driving beliefs in my life is that we're all more alike than we are different. And I want to make sure that uh, we all understand each other. So I like explaining myself and the LGBTQ plus community to straight people and neurotypical people. And I want to go the other way too and explain them to, to my core audience. So it's, uh, uh, that's really what drives a lot of my comedy. As far as the particular style of my comedy though, it's really boils down to, I love patterns in speech and language and joking is all about patterns, you know, uh, especially the way that my particular style, which is very set up punchline, set up punchline tag, it's, there's a rhythm in it that feels very natural to me and is just uh, really hits me to my core. So I, I really feel that and I love that, that, that experience. And oh, making people laugh is one of the best things you're gonna do in your life. When you can make a whole, room full of people laugh that's a pure shot of adrenaline right to the brain and the heart so i uh can't tell you how much it means to me that i can that i have that ability yeah and, and that's fabulous and i love that you talk about everything personal that's going on with you and um you just reminded me a few months back i interviewed oliver graves and ryan Niemiller from agt and they were the finalists and they both had disabilities and they both talked about how um, for them, it's about, it's about for them, they're comedians like yourself. That's why I draw attention to that. And for them, it was not highlighting the disability, but not hiding the disability, but saying, I have this and this, I'm not like for you, I'm not just autism or Asperger's. I am a comedian too. I have this, but I'm letting other folks know because um, uh, if they're in a situation like me, or if they're like me, or if there's other me's out there. So when I think about Oliver, he's always been different, <clears throat> never the same, liked wearing makeup, very heavy goth, and never the same. And for him, it, it was about being different, showing how he shines. So when I think about Ryan Niemiller, aka Cripple Threat, he calls himself, is um, for him, it was, he was never supposed to do anything. He said, I can't even put my own shirt on without suffocating almost each day. And now I get to perform in front of folks. It's about telling the story. So the reason why I segued into this is because drawing back to what Tyler talked about is telling a story. So when you think about any kind of art in specific, even what we're doing right now, we're telling a story. And so talking about getting into your head, I'm going to move to you now, Ethan, when you're writing music, what's your process like? You've written some really, really huge hits. Um, you're very successful in what you do, um, playing to sold out folks all around the world, Ethan. And um, you're the same like uh, Tyler and Darren, where you have your hand in many things. Um, talk me through the process of mental health and writing. And does that affect the writing? Um, I, I usually people watch. I love watching people. <laughs> it's something that I've always done even before I did all the psychology stuff. Um, people fascinate me and, and similarly like uh, Darren, you know, I'm neurodiverse and you see the world in a slightly different, uh, slightly different way. Um, you know, I get stuck in my shoe at least once a month. Um, and then I have to then panic and have to get someone to undo the laces. Um, but I, I, I just love watching people. And, and I, I like, you know, like Tyler said, I think like all of us, we like telling stories. Um, you know, there, there is a certain way you can do it. And I've kind of been fortunate enough to work with some really amazing writers and learn from them. And they, they kind of have a similar process. And it's, um, you know, I... Some I've got a CD that's coming out like really soon. Like it gets delivered tomorrow, um, and none of it's particularly happy. It's it's one of those 
one of those CDs. It's because of the last two years, but it's more, I think it's a little bit more real. Um, and I, I found that, you know, I, I don't write um, stories about people that I come into contact through from a professional capacity, but it's, it's, um, cause that would be unethical. Um, but it's, <laughs> um, you know, you, the things you hear, the things you see, the things you learn, it's, um, I think it does take a toll on you as a person, but it, it, you know, you, you can actually say, look, this, this, this is, this is fairly, this is fairly common. This is fairly normal. You know, people having, um, you know, suddenly having the symptoms of things like anxiety, depression, and a panic attack in, in, in a pandemic, it's a, uh, it's a normal reaction to the most abnormal circumstances, you know, and then people realize, oh, actually, yeah, it's, this is, this is fine. It's not, it, I, I don't like it, but it's, it's fairly common. It's fairly normal. Absolutely. And so since we have you on first, I'm going to ask some questions now for some of your fans that are out there for each of you. Um, what is something we would be surprised to learn about Ethan Ash? It could be mysterious. It could be secret. It could be illegal. I'll keep it a secret. It's private. Uh, something that you'd be surprised. <laughs> Other um, than you're not wearing pants right now. Please don't stand up. Well, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, kind of, I kind of, I don't necessarily talk too much about, like, the the, the, the mental health stuff too much and, or, or the, you know, like, I've got three degrees. I don't know. Um, you know, I'm an educated idiot. Um, and all I want to do is play my stupid songs on stage. That's all I want to do. Um I don't know that I, I, I probably have too many Disney related shoes. That's fairly boring. You know, I usually wear all, all black, but I have multiple multicolored shoes that I'm like, this is great. I'm not going to wear them because I can't get them dirty. <laughs> That's fair. Okay. Let's move on to you, Tyler. I want to know something that we'd be surprised to learn about you, legal or illegal. Okay. Is it, is, should it be more wacky or more, more relevant, like a random? What we could do think? a wacky. More illegal. I'll take something wacky. wacky. Oh, okay. He wants illegal. Yeah. Yep. Illegal. Oh, well, illegal. Well, illegal. I don't, know. I don't know. The, the, the court order says I'm not allowed to say any of that. <laughs> um, I know I, I have a, 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 almost like a, an addiction to popcorn. That's one of my absolute favorite things. I, I, I've been getting into that more lately with different seasonings and different types of kernels and different sort of things. And I have a bit of an obsession, maybe not an addiction, but a bit of an obsession with uh, homemade popcorn lately. It's been been a lot of fun. They're very delicious. And you don't like to eat it. You just like to make it look at it, right? <laughs> no, no, I, I eat it. Trust me, I eat it. Yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you have the popcorn at that, at that show on PEI? No, I didn't. Did you? Was, oh. it, was, it, was, it, was it good or bad? I don't know. I'm not the expert. Oh. There was popcorn. How did he? Ethan, I was working. I couldn't. I couldn't take a break to go get. Oh, was popcorn. I? But... <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Ever the ever the professional, Tyler. <laughs> That's fair. So popcorn is your thing. And um, what about you, Darren? Um. Well, I can think of two things off the top of my head. Number one, I love, love, love uh, death metal and black mm -hmm. metal and grindcore, really extreme, <laughs> heavy stuff. Uh, that's my uh, that's my jam. It's been that way ever since uh, the 80s, actually. I love uh, the more extreme, the better. Uh, the other thing I can think of is when I was living in Vancouver, I was living in Vancouver for quite some time. I uh, started uh, the first gay rugby club in all of Canada. So wow. uh, it was called the Vancouver Rogues and it uh, unfortunately didn't last too long, but it uh, we got it up and running. We had 25 people at our first practice and I was the one who brought them all together with the help of uh, some other gay rugby teams in Seattle and San Francisco. So uh, it, for me, it was a, a, a labor of love and I enjoyed every second of it. And I really enjoy the game of rugby. That's that's awesome. That is congrats. That's fantastic. Uh, was yeah. it hard to start? Was it hard to start that up? Uh, it was challenging for me because I'm not used to going up and introducing myself or, uh, to people in bars and stuff like that, which is mostly how I, I uh, get the people uh, to join. 
So, but having a purpose uh, driving me for that really helped. Like if it was just socially, I wouldn't be able to do that at all. I'd have a panic attack and I'd have a public meltdown. But because I had this purpose in mind, I was able to go up to people and hand them a flyer and say, you should come up. Uh, and it, uh, so it, it paid off. It really did pay off in a lot of ways, even though the, the club didn't last for, for very long. But yeah, it was, it was fantastic for me, it, a great experience. That's awesome. I know for me, so a couple of things you might be surprised at is I like to watch people eat popcorn. It's always been a thing. And, um, but <laughs> we laugh, but it's kind of true. So I started doing keto. So I went from enjoying like all this, like fatty kind of snacks to being that weird person in the lunchroom where I'm, where I'm just like zoomed right in up close, um, watching folks eat it where it's really been a problem for a lot of folks. And it would be nice to be allowed back in the cafeteria again, if we're being honest, but I mean, baby steps, I suppose. Um, so the next, the next thing, uh, the next question is, um, I want to know, and this is always important, is I want to know what you're watching on Netflix. Um, and I want to know, yeah, so for instance, um, I finished, I just finished watching not too long ago. I binge watched Dexter, the new season of it. That wasn't on Netflix. That was on a different uh, program. But um, you also get $3 each if you say the word Netflix a lot um, and in royalties. And um but I finished watching Ozark and it's funny because um, I was on a date a little bit ago, not a date, but a first meetup and we, and it was in a McGesso park and thought, no, that's a different subject. We won't go there today. Nope. Nope. We're going to be professional. Now, anyway, I'm kidding. All kidding aside is Ozark is um, what I just finished watching. And um, I thought that that was a really good show on Netflix, but a lot of folks tend to binge watch a lot. And Darren, you look like a binge watcher. I'm sorry, I'm terrible at segueing into things. I, I don't know why. You look like you wear white sneakers. You look like you wear white sneakers and you binge watch Netflix. There, I said it. Yeah. Uh, uh, actually, I'm a dark shoe person. So, uh, oh, yeah. oh, can you hold your foot up? Hold your foot up. I am not wearing anything. <laughs> Okay, you're He's not, not wearing pants. I can't <laughs> talk. I, <laughs> not without getting arrested. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you're, you, you're dang on with the binge watching. I am a binge watcher. Um, and the weirdest thing is there's so much good content on all these streaming services, especially Netflix. Uh, but the thing that I keep gravitating towards, and I'm doing this again, is periodically I have to rewatch the entire uh, series of Schitt's Creek from beginning to end <laughs> and I have to and I keep going back to that like I'll go back and I'll search through all this great new content and I'll go yeah shit's great again <laughs> it's fine but it's just such a uh, oh a wonderful 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 show that I never get tired of watching it's a, it's just if you haven't seen it what's wrong come on See, exactly and yeah. I, I feel like I feel like Tyler's answer is going to be the maritime something I can't think of the word but Tyler go ahead I'll let you answer <laughs> Not quite. Uh, so as far as like streaming shows that I, I've been binging, I haven't really watched much lately on, on, on Netflix or Hulu or Amazon Prime. I haven't really watched anything new lately, but my old favorites are always Black Mirror and Stranger Things and whoever has the rights to stream The Office this month. Uh, those are my those are my go to shows. Um, I was on Disney Plus for a little bit to get back into the old Simpsons episodes, like literally starting at season one. Uh, when the animation style was way different, but the writing was still gold, those are some of my those are some of my all time favorites. Um, but other other than that, like my my favorite streaming platform is actually YouTube. I I, love, I really love YouTube and the way that it's there. There's no gated door. You know, it's anybody can go and watch it. You don't have to pay 10, 12 bucks a month. Anybody can go watch the content on there. Uh, so I, I tend to gravitate toward watching a lot of YouTube shorts and, and a lot of YouTubers and, and that sort of stuff. And that's, yeah, that's, that's sort of what I've been doing lately. Fair. Ethan? Um, I think my mine is, I, I, I kind of do what Darren does and I just, I ended up, hello, that's my airport. Um, I... I end up going through kind of like every single thing, looking at every single thing, and then just watching something like Stranger Things. I just rewatch it all the time. I don't have the attention span to focus on something I haven't seen a lot of the time. Um, right. Although lately my wife got me into Bob's Burgers, and I can't stop watching Bob's Burgers um, on on Disney Plus. It's I I love it. <laughs> 
It also oh, like yeah. uh, the Great North, if I may recommend that too, because it's the same. I haven't style. watched that yet, yeah, but uh, really I, I I like. I like the look of it. I'll get to Bob's Burgers and then I'll probably rewatch it a couple more times and then I'll go to the Great North. Yeah. That was my stripper name. Funny fact. It still is. It still is. And okay, moving along to um, what is on everybody's playlist right now on Spotify other than Ethan Ash, of course. Don't put that on. <laughs> no, but, um, <laughs> is that on your done. playlist? Is Ethan Ash on your playlist? See, Ethan Ash? See, the only reason I have listened to my own songs lately was to remember them. <laughs> Is it the karaoke I like, version? <laughs> no, I wish it was. <laughs> it was someone would sing it better. You know, um, what's what have I listened to? Um, I've listened to loads of Marcus King lately uh, and like Tedeschi Trucks. Um, but I'm I'm one of those people that just I listen to anything. I'm I'm one of those. People, the, you know, the people you hate. And I'm like, oh, I know, I just listen to anything. Um, I, li- I listen to a lot of metal as well. I listen to Raging as a Machine pretty much every time before I go on stage. I've been yep. listening to Strapping Young Lad, Static X, like just loads of different stuff. But then I listen to Blues, Death Heart. So everything. Marcus King is like the thing that I'm listening to at the moment. I love Marcus King. He's very good. Awesome. Awesome. Tyler, what are you listening to? Uh, lately, I've really been getting into a lot of Elenium, Alan Walker, a lot more of the uh, electronic music, EDM music I've been getting back into um, lately. But like just last week, I, I listened to a whole Bring Me the Horizon albums. They're sort of like a modern day heavy metal post hardcore band that I used to love uh, back in the day. And they just put out some new music and was binging that for a little bit. Um, but mostly lately, electronic music and then some of the older uh, heavy metal stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Darren, what are you listening to other than Ace of Base? <laughs> uh, well, you know what? I love me some metal, of course. Uh, of course. And I've always got my old, I, I love going and revisiting the old days of the late 80s, early 90s of uh, death metal and, and black metal. Um, however, the, the albums, the two albums that I keep coming back to came out last year, uh, right now, and uh, there's a British rapper named Little Sims. She put out the Ooh. best hip hop uh, album of last year, period. Uh, like, and it was weird because it happened right between uh, Drake dropping uh, 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 his album and Kanye dropping his album. She was right in the middle and she did better than both of them. It was a really, it's called Sometimes I Am uh, Introvert. And it is a masterpiece. It's absolutely wonderful. Uh, and I listen to a lot of comedy albums. I really do. I, co- I keep going. Who's back your favorite to- comedy? Who's your favorite um, comedy? Well, my favorite comedy. Oh God, <laughs> we don't have Darren that much Elmer, time. April thirtieth. At- <laughs> well, James. Uh, James yeah. is good. Absolutely. Uh, Five more dollars coming your way. Out west from Vancouver, I know her. She is brilliant. Uh, right now, I really love Katie Ellen Humphreys. She's got an album on uh, iTunes and Spotify. It's really, really good. It's called Ladyfinger. Uh, <clears throat> recently, uh, Jackie Cation uh, from down in the States, she released an album called Staycation, and it is absolutely brilliant. I can listen to that many, many times and still laugh myself foolish. So uh, those are my two favorites right now that I keep going back to. Thank you so much. We just have about three minutes left, and my question for each of you would be, um, if folks want to reach out to you guys, if they want to book you or they want to be talking to you or hire you for an event or uh, just if they're lonely at 3 a.m., get a hold of you, um, how could they? Let's start with you. Let's start with you, Darren. <laughs> well, you can find me on uh, socials, uh, Facebook, uh, Darren Elmore, um, Twitter at Darren Elmore and Instagram, the Darren Elmore, uh, the underscore Darren <clears throat> underscore Elmore uh, and you can uh, just contact me via via those and I will uh, be glad to get back to you. Thank you so much for that. Ethan, how can folks get a hold of you? Uh, do you prefer letter mail? Do you prefer digital? Like a pen and quail? Like if peop- uh, I can use a pager. Um, um, <laughs> some people I work with like. <laughs> yeah, one, no, no, one of the old flip phones. You know the old flip phones where when somebody sent you a text that big, it meant something. Yeah. A O E F T Y. Yeah. Um, pretty much uh, socials on Ethan Ash Music. Um, 
or ethanashmusic at gmail.com. That's how most of my bookings get done. Um, okay. Yeah, Facebook, Instagram, all that, all that stuff. Yeah. And I hate to put you on the spot, but you still didn't give me your new cell phone number yet. I know that you said you're waiting for it to get connected. I wonder if that happened yet. It's 911. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. So, Tyler, how I know, you- I know he's British. It's 999. Yeah. No. <laughs> what happens if you're in Europe, though, Darren? Oh, you know, yeah, what do you, how do you, what do you, it's like, then something is going one, very, two. very wrong. <laughs> I need here. I'm here, and I need the police, and I don't know what it is. Tell me. <laughs> You're just trying to get it. You can't. I Tyler, think I it. <laughs> it goes. It just keeps going round and round. It's just the dispatcher. <laughs> Tyler, how can we book you? Uh, the best way to book me is to go right to my website. So www.tylerwarrenellis.com. You can see my full portfolio, my biography, my photos, my videos, uh, TV shows, all that stuff. Uh, and on that website, there's a contact button. Click the contact button. That goes directly to my email, which is the one thing I still have notifications on for my phone. So is it, is it at Yahoo or and two weeks later, phone? you'll get a response. And then two <laughs> weeks later, this man speaking from experience, isn't he? <laughs> I think, uh, not that I think you're, you're super, all kidding aside, you're super quick to get a hold of. So in part of your portfolio is um, you'll do pretty much any event, right? Um, so... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I'm interested in it, obviously, you know, uh, which is is most of the time I love live music. I love live comedy. So, um, you know, one thing I've always said to to bands, especially like younger bands is send me your music, because if I like your music, I want to come make a video for you and, and we'll, you know, we can work something out. And and like, if I'm a fan, I want to to make a video for your music. So little note, if anybody, if anybody, I, I can attest to that. Ethan can attest to that. I can that. attest yeah. to that. He, uh, he's horribly talented, is Tyler, and I don't like to yep. inflate his ego, but he's got a lot of stuff I know, I know. We don't want like, to give uh, him a big head. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, too late. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, well, guys, I want to say thank you so, so much. Um, thank you so much for everybody that tuned in and watched today. Um, not listened, uh, that they watched. And thank you so much, Tyler, for joining me. We really appreciate it. So you heard how you can book him. Thank you so much, Darren, for joining us today. Um, Make sure you go check Darren out at the BMO Theater um, this month. It's going to be a great show for the live taping. And uh, April 30th, you'll get a chance to see both of them at the same time if you want. And Ethan will be watching them, uh, texting from his uh, pager if you want to. But otherwise, you can Go ahead and book him. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today at Port City Personalities. We're out.